What's going on, everybody? JT here, and I am with Dan Goldman, the founder and CEO of Ultrade. Ultrade is a multi-chain DeFi trading platform comprising of full limit order book trading for spot and derivatives, along with many other unique functions. Uh, very happy to have this discussion today. So welcome to the program, Dan. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Thank you, JT, for having me. Uh, excited to, uh, to uh, get to know you and uh, through you uh, get a little bit more uh, familiarized uh, or uh, allowing the the community out there, you know, algo community that has been, uh, you know, viewing you and uh, involved in Algorand for a long time, an opportunity to get to know me a little bit. Um, so I really appreciate uh, this opportunity. Absolutely. And I've been seeing a lot, lot more about old trade on, on Twitter. I mean, the, the activity on Twitter has been picking up and picking up. So let's start off with what is old trade and what inspired you to create it? Old trade is a uh, DeFi as a service uh, trading infrastructure. That's a big term, which basically means it's a uh, B2B technology designed to enable other companies and brands to launch their own uh, branded DeFi trading platform without any coding or any dev knowledge, etc. You know, you, you said kind of like in the intro, you were talking about a limit order book trading and derivatives, etc. Those are, I would say, are kind of the B two C products themselves, right? The actual trading solutions. But as a company, our business focus is B two B, meaning providing it as a as a uh, an infrastructure solution for other brands to uh, to bring to their audiences. So how would that work? If you know, we we talked a little bit off air, but say I wanted to uh, you know create some sort of service for my viewers here uh, on the channel, how would that work? You know, I'd build a website and or something like that, and then just you know embed these services on the website, or how, how would that work? That's actually a great a great way to describe one way that it could work right and <clears throat> and i love that you're saying if you want if i wanted to give this to my audience right because that's part of what we're aiming for to enable really any kind of brand it doesn't matter if it you know it can be you know a key opinion leader uh, uh that has an audience uh such as yourself it can be another blockchain company that does something else but wants to bring this as value add services or you know crypto news website the one thing that's always common uh, to all of these is that they have a blockchain and crypto audience that at any point in time is going to need trading services. So what are they going to do? They're going to go elsewhere, right? So why? So that's part of the business aspect. But in terms of how how uh, it would be carried out, um, you will literally be able to spin up an, the entire what we call ultimate trading suite that, that we're building. In five minutes, uh, with your own brand, you know your your name, your logo, your color scheme, whatever it is, and integrate it into um, your website, uh, an existing app as a widget or a full blown app. So there, over time, there will be different you know uh, ways that you can accomplish this. But um, yeah, literally. Uh, in just a few minutes, you'll be able to provide the entire experience to your to your audience. That's fantastic. So, I mean, we touched on it a little bit, but what problems does it solve? I mean, why would people uh, want to do this as opposed to just going to a regular centralized exchange or a decentralized exchange? Uh, what what benefits will uh, you know will be given to businesses and consumers through through using this method? So, for the consumer, it all boils down to. Do you want a centralized or, or, or non-custodial, you know, solution, right? Uh, me personally, I I prefer non-custodial. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons why, you know, the trading volumes in in DeFi have been barely barely ten percent of centralized trading, right? Over the last couple of years, you got to ask yourself why, right? So. We don't have yet enough tools that exist in centralized in DeFi, right? So if you had all those tools in one place, you know, kind of like an experience that's comparable to what you can get from Binance, from FTX, et cetera, you know, the big boys. If you had that experience available to you in DeFi, many users would opt for 
the non-custodial option, right? Th that's one aspect here. So part of what we're building, uh, or really that kind of like the the user experience that we're we're building is comparable to what you would get at the high-end exchanges. But it's not just that. It's if I'm a uh, viewer of JT, or if I am, you know, or if familiar with a brand and I'm using that brand for whatever it is, if I need to trade right now, why should I have to go somewhere else? Why not just do it right there and then? Yeah. So that, from from a user perspective, you know, it's a question of of, of convenience the, and the user experience that they get and getting it as a non-custodial solution rather than having to... Uh, give uh, uh, the keys to my soul uh, to, uh, to a centralized uh, entity. Now, from a business perspective, though, you know, the B2B aspect, which is really our direct uh, users, let's call them, for them, we're solving, a, depending on their, you know, what they are, we, can, we solve different problems. So for brands that have an audience, we are essentially cre enabling them to create a new revenue stream, right? And which is important. Uh, as we said, right now, your users, everybody else's users, you know, they go, they have to leave and go somewhere else to do their trading. You know, you want to keep your users, which you bled for, you know, to, to earn, you have to send them somewhere else whenever they want to do trading. They leave. And that's not good for you. That's not good for yeah. any brand out there. So that's, you know, one part of, 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 the, of what we're solving. Specifically, for example, for companies that are planning to launch tokens, and there are quite a few out there, right? And there are going to be yeah. thousands of them over the next few years. We also enable them not just to provide these value-add services to their, to their communities, but also do self-listing, which is a huge issue. Yeah. You know, right now, a new token might get lucky and get picked up by, you know, picked up. They have to pay a lot of money for it to get to be put into exchanges. And most often, your chances to get into a, into a you know, tier one exchange are slim to none. And even if you do, you're, you have to pay through the roof for it. So we are going to provide you with an alternative. You will no longer be dependent on that. So right now those are the two options. You have either you can either list with exchange with centralized exchanges or open an uh, AMM pool, right? A liquidity yeah. pool on an AMM, which is also not good for you as a as a new token because it creates a lot of unnecessary volatility and and uh, uh, and down pressure which you want to avoid. So you'll actually be able to spin up your own entire DeFi platform which is also value add service to your users. And self-list your own token in an order book type exchange instantly. So you will no longer be dependent on centralized exchanges as your sole solution for your listings. But here comes the really cool part, network effects. Yep. So let me pull back a little bit before we continue. And, you know, you kind of asked me what inspired me to create this, etc. So we touched a little bit about the fact that all of these exchanges, be it centralized or decentralized, are no longer differentiated. There's no difference between Binance and FTX or the the less you know the last uh, one on the list, right down the hundreds of of exchanges. It's all the same order book type trading. Yes, there's a feature here, there's a feature there. The UX is better, the UI is better. Um, but ultimately, the core product is the same. And the same goes for DeFi, right? So uh, we have Uniswap, and then SushiSwap, and then CakeSwap, and then whatever swap, and infinitum, uh, ad infinitum swap, right? They, they, they just keep coming, but it's all the same thing. Yes, a feature here, a feature there, but you're, there's no longer any differentiation. But guess what? They all want you to think of them as your trading destination. So let me ask you this. If you're opening a restaurant 20 miles out of the way and you're telling people, come to my restaurant 20 miles, it's only 20 miles away you know, to drive and you'll get a great burger that tastes exactly like McDonald's that you can find five of them down the block. 
does that sound like a good business to you? Does, are, do you have any reason to go all the way 20 miles out of the way to, to them to eat the same McDonald's that you can get yeah. in, in Main Street? And so, so that's what they all try to do. And people ape into these or did ape into these, you know, um, uh, exchanges and, and, uh, and AMMs that kept springing up. And almost all of them fail for the same reason, right? Because why would users come to them if the service is the same? Now, the other, co- the, the other side of this coin is that all of these exchanges, centralized and decentralized, are vying for the same users, and they are spending an insane amount of money on user acquisition, what's known in the industry as CAC, C-A-C, Customer Acquisition Cost. And what's worse is the bigger they get, their CAC actually keeps growing because they tap into these pools of users and they exhaust them And then they have to go after new pools of users and new pools of users to keep growing. It gets even worse because then, you know, as they keep growing, you know, there's the cost of acquisition of the user, but what is the lifetime value of that user? And at what point are you getting a return, right, on that user? And if you're growing too fast, you have to pour an insane amount of capital into your growth but you're still losing money. This is basically what's been happening in, in Silicon Valley in general, right? And, and they're, they're kind of putting a stop to it now. We can see it in the market. But, um, you know, so all of these exchanges have this, the same problem they, because they don't have network effects, right? So the, they keep have, acquiring these users. Some companies, you know, big boys, actually acquire other companies just for the users, not for the service, not for the product, nothing, just for the users because it's a little cheaper. Yeah. Yep. So I looked at all of that and I said, this doesn't make sense. And this is kind of like where I, I think uh, is the market, you know, where the market will be going, right? Because we can't keep having all of these, uh, uh, you know, companies building new and, you know, again and again and again, the same thing. And, and trying to fight with each other for, for the users. It just doesn't make sense. So this all brought me to say, okay, instead, we can build an infrastructure that lets everybody you know, spin up their own brand of DeFi. But it's all with shared liquidity, right? So they are all trading with each other. And the, the, the companies that list tokens can actually not just um, list for their own community, but that's where network effects come into play, not just for us to acquire users, but for them as our partners. Because the moment that you list your token, all the other white label partners in the, in the network can see your pair, your token, and say, ah, I like this one. I'm going to list it as well. So suddenly you can get a huge exposure as the network grows you can get huge exposure to a you know a big audience for trading without having to do anything other than list yourself in your own brand that's fantastic and and to your point too about all of these decentralized exchanges that and even centralized exchanges that are essentially building the same thing over and over again um, I mean you're mostly right I know a lot of people uh, personally that have built decentralized exchanges on algorithm they're great people they've built great products but uh, even even myself I use like dex aggregators that basically aggregate the trading routes between four or five different dexes anyway so I'm actually not even going to you any direct decentralized exchange for any certain reason I'm just going to an aggregator that's going to find me the best price across all of these dexes so uh, you, you know your point is well taken there uh, I'm curious you know uh, all trades building on al grand you know but it's brand, it brands itself as a multi-chain uh, you know you know application what other chains will be uh, will be available to trade on with the uh, old trade we're still cool Looking into it, you know, we, uh, we haven't made any final decisions on, on which chains will be next. But, you know, the usual sp- suspects, I would say, for, for me, when I, when I look at uh, a DeFi, and this is really one of the main reasons I, I chose Algorand as, 
you know, the the first chain that to build on is security, right? So there are a few a few things that are important for DeFi. It needs to be secure. It needs to be fast. It needs to be cheap. Algorand has all of those, right? And stable. So Solana, for example, has has technically all of those, but it's unstable, yeah. um, which also is a concern with security. So there are some, you know, issue, potential issues there. But so I think that that is kind of like our our main focus. And there are some uh, chains out there that might have those characteristics as well. Some new ones that are coming now that we are considering as well, such as Aptos, Sui, and uh, uh, maybe a few others. You know, but we're looking at at all the options. So. We may have an EVM version at some point. Um, we uh, we are considering Solana and Near, you know, kind of, uh, but case by case basis and the timeline depends. You know, we still need to raise some more capital in order to expand, uh, et cetera. So it's not set in stone at this point. Perfect. And, and yeah, I know you mentioned uh, potentially building out an EVM style of it, uh, which would be actually really interesting because Milk Amida is launching a, uh, you know, Algorand rollup for, for EVM, essentially. So basically, in the next couple of weeks, people will be able to launch uh, Ethereum virtual machine style applications on this Milk Amida rollup that'll operate on Algorand, which uh, I'm super excited for because uh, I do think it's going to be a multi-chain world. Uh, I think a lot of us in the space that are serious think it's going to be a multi-chain world. Uh, and with yeah. the advent of state proofs and their recent upgrade and now this uh, Milk Amida mainnet release for the EVM rollup on Algorand, I think uh, the space over the next six to 12 months might look tremendously different than it does now. So I'm super excited about that, but I don't want to get off on a little tangent. Uh, you did mention... Uh, that you think the future of DeFi is going to you know, change dramatically, which will uh, kind of builds on what I was just touching on uh, just now. Uh, what, what do you think DeFi looks like you know, two, three, four years down the line from here? You know, we, t- we talked about it a moment ago, kind of like in my view, the era of destination trading apps is over, right? Where everybody's doing their own uh, thing, thinking that you know, it's the best thing since sliced bread and, and everybody's going to come to them. So I don't think that's going to happen. I think, you know, instead of seeing companies build, you know, the same thing over and over, uh, like AMMs, et cetera, uh, we're going to start seeing commoditized infrastructure solutions such as old trade uh, that let companies provide those base services to their audiences. And that, I think, is going to be a big help or, you know, in part a catalyst for companies starting to build, you know, projects starting to come out with more differentiated products that are kind of, you know, not the basic stuff. Like trading is already, you know, we don't need to reinvent uh, order book trading right now, but, you know, NFT uh, platforms, you know, some of them are the same as others, but there is all sorts of cool stuff out there that is, you know, creating things that are not the same uh, and more and more usage of blockchain technology and crypto, and, you know, and, and I think the market is going to start going more in those directions because up until now, a lot of the stuff focused on these, you know, everybody trying to pile into trading and all this, but we exhausted the, the need for that. It, but there's much greater need for, you know, insur- for example, uh, insurance tech, right? So there's so much stuff that can be, you know, uh, innovated in in that space. GameFi, uh, all of the NFTs. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that that can, you know, be created with this technology and tokenized as well, right? Uh, and I think we're going to start seeing more and more companies building uh, cool new stuff and stopping, you know, with this trend of of building over and over again the same thing. And this is a big, in big part, what I'm trying to push for and why I'm building all trade this way. You know, I think it's the right business model, right? But I, I think it's gonna kind of help move the market in in the right direction where it's no longer 
you know, it doesn't make sense for anybody to to keep building these things again and again and again when it when you know an infrastructure like Ultrade is out there and available. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And there, there really has been throughout the last couple of years, or maybe even more than that, a lot of copy pasting of applications really from one chain to another chain. And it really hasn't been until, in my opinion, like maybe the last 12 months or so that we've started to see a lot more creativity in the space. And you mentioned GameFi, you mentioned NFTs, you mentioned, uh, you know, a couple other spots of the blockchain ecosystem that you know, are innovating and are evolving, but there was at least a period of time where it really was uh, very much so copy and paste, you know, what worked over here and bring it over here. And to some degree, it was necessary because, you know, all these chains, they needed the basic infrastructure like uh, trading platforms so they could have liquidity and, and lending and all that stuff. But, you know, once you once you build out the uh, necessities, then you're kind of at a stalemate unless uh, you have people that are innovating and being creative, as, as you just mentioned. So uh, I completely agree there. If we could pull it back a little bit to uh, how Old Trade works, I'd love to know how the liquidity on the platform works, because you said it's not going to be like a normal decentralized exchange or centralized exchange. It's going to be an order book exchange. So that leads me to believe there won't be the uh, normal LP providers that you find on decentralized exchanges. Could you talk a little bit to uh, how the liquidity will work on the platform? Sure. So what we call the ultimate trading suite is really four core uh, trading or DeFi products. Uh, the first is uh, limit order book spot decks. And this is already on testnet. Um, we can touch a little bit more details on that uh, uh, later. Uh, the second, which is coming literally, it's going to be out um, uh, in October on testnet, is an AMM, right? Because it is a product that's needed, right? So yeah. the whole trading suite that we're providing wouldn't be complete without those core things, right? So it Makes does sense. need to be there. Um, and then after that will come uh, leveraged perpetuals as an order book uh, uh, dex for leveraged perpetuals and and then lending and borrowing so liquidity will be dependent on the specific product within the suite right so the amm will have uh, liquidity pools uh, for uh, you know regular tokens for stable pools uh, etc on the order book, obviously, it, it works differently. So an order book, you know, we will have professional SDKs for market makers um, to enable them, you know, to provide, to, to make markets in, in the order book. We're also going to support liquidity uh, um, or market making by, by community members through uh, Hummingbot. So there will be, you know, full solutions for liquidity provisions both on the order book side and uh, amm side and the same goes for you know so leverage perpetuals as an order book is the same situation and then lending and borrowing will be you know um pools uh for lending and borrowing possibly also order book based lending and borrowing kind of you know we're still figuring out which if you want to do one or the other or maybe both uh so kind of depends on on the on the technical implementation we will go with for that. So that's fantastic. So it really is a, a DeFi suite. You know, you've got your AMM, you've got your order book exchanges, you've got the lending and borrowing that you're, that you're planning on building out, uh, derivatives such as perpetuals and, and things like that. Uh, so that, that's actually really, really, really exciting. Um, so Testnet is currently underway, correct? Yeah, Testnet, we came out with the um, order book uh, spot decks in okay. June. And yeah, so, June 20th was the official, you know, uh, public launch of, um, of the test net. Now what's and, available you know, on the been, test net? Is it just the spot trading on the order book currently on the test net? Yes. So okay. right now you have, uh, that's the, the first product that came out. As I said, the AMM will be out, uh, over the next few weeks and and by the way, alongside that will be the entire white label solution as well. So, you know, Fantastic. to potential uh, um, white label partners will already enable them to start testing, actually launching literally within five minutes, boom, an entire platform uh, on, on testing. And in the order book, we already support um, limit market IOC and post orders. Um, IOC means uh, immediate for your audience, uh, if, if they're not familiar, um, immediate or cancel. Uh, 
okay. uh, post means basically it's a, um, what's called maker only, uh, which is specifically for, uh, uh, for market makers. Uh, they require that kind of uh, uh, solution. So, you know, later on we'll uh, expand, we expect to expand also with uh, various, uh, you know, uh, stop type um, uh, orders as well. Fantastic. And yeah, so that's already on testnet with literally thousands and thousands of, of users testing it. So just to give you a little bit of, uh, I know you, you were talking about uh, earlier about the uh, um, activity in Twitter, et cetera. So, you know, we are not a B2C company, right? So yeah. our core audience is not, you know, the, the direct retail. But we, you know, we brought the the the, the product uh, and the company public. Uh, you know, we made it public uh, just shortly before going to testnet. And what we knew we needed was a lot of real world testing. Yeah. So we bent over backwards to try and engage with people who are interested in this kind of stuff and to help us test this thing. So to date, you know, the, the initial kind of response was unbelievable within literally a week or so from, from launch of the test that we had, I don't know, about 3000 people already testing it and, you know, tons of orders etc and to date you know what is it like three months later now we have something like i don't know between six and seven thousand active accounts nearly two hundred thousand uh orders and trades that's and pretty impressive for a test net honestly it is and not only that we even have roughly about 16 or 1700 um feedbacks from users with feature requests, bug reports, UI, you know, uh, suggestions. Uh, it's a big number. You know, we integrated a professional um, uh, bug and feedback uh, report, you know, uh, uh, system in in the app. And the response was, was incredible. You know, a lot of people, there's a, there's a tendency, you know, some of those uh, uh, users come from, uh, you know, Indonesia, a lot of places, right? So, yeah. not necessarily US based or or Europe, but th there's I don't know this uh, uh, tendency sometimes to discount them as not real users. You know, people from from those regions for some reason, which is not true. If I showed you, I'd be happy maybe at another another uh, talk like this. I'd be happy to talk again. Uh, I'd be happy to share with you. You know some of the feedback and, and, you know, bug reports, et cetera, that people give and suggestions, you know, actually saying, listen, I, you know, when I trade, I, I like it to work like this. I don't like, you know, I'd like, you know, they actually dive into the product and provide real thinking. I'm not going to say that every one of them, right. But there's a lot of that. So we were floored. I was shocked by the level of feedback that we got, you know, the quality of it. and you know, we started diving into it and fixing everything and, you know, upgrading. So you can see in our blog on Medium, a bunch of stuff that came on the back of, of all these suggestions and, and bug reports, et cetera. And we actually just did, uh, did uh, our first bug bounty too, which was really cool because, you know, people were actively hunting for those bugs, small or big, didn't matter things that you know we didn't have time to notice and they did and they reported it and we're now fixing it so it's really cool to uh to see this level of engagement even on at a testnet level right so absolutely I, I, I know plenty of projects uh yeah i know plenty of projects that have a hard time even getting a couple hundred users on their testnet uh so so that's a fantastic number that you just gave out to us is there a rough timeline on the mainnet release for at least the first product roughly uh, end of year, uh, most likely, you know, awesome. we don't want to, we don't want to rush it. And obviously the market conditions are also, you know, not necessarily the best for, uh, for, uh, for launching right now. 
So taking it all into consideration, you know, we're not we're not in a rush. Uh, so I would say roughly uh, end of year as it stands right now. Perfect, perfect. And will there be a token? Uh, will Will Old Trade have their own t- uh, personal token when uh, the project launches? Yeah, uh, the token launch itself will may not necessarily be exactly at mainnet. Might might take a little longer. We'll we'll have to see again market conditions, etc. We'll yeah. we'll have to decide. But yes, uh, there will be a token, a utility token, uh, and I'm assuming you, you would want to know what the utility is, right? I, that, uh, that was going to be my my next question. If you want to fill us in, there's going to be utility both on the B2C and B2B side of it. So we will have our own brand as well, right? As as all trade for for B2C, if users reach us and want to trade through us directly. But uh, so you know, trading through the platform. You'll be able to stake. You'll have multiple staking opportunities uh, with the All Trade token that uh, will provide you with trading discounts on the variety of of uh, you know products uh, in the suite, um, and also of course governance, uh, etc., and uh, yield generation, and so on. But there's also a B2B side, right? Remember we said this is DeFi as a service. So we are kind of reimagining or, you know, getting a little more creative with with, uh, utility for what utility for tokens could mean in that context. And part of it is uh, will be um, uh, for fee generation for the B2B partners. So... You know, the B two B the the white label partners will be able to generate fees from their own trading, right? So uh, the the fees will be shared with all trade at a certain ratio, and to get a higher ratio, they will need to stake the all trade token. So at, at certain ratios, you will be able to get all the way down from twenty percent uh, for the white label partner, and all the way up to ninety percent. Wow. So higher staking ratios of our token will enable you uh, this is and, and we call it the model that we go with uh, where we went with is uh, what we call um, kind of stake as you go. So essentially you'll be able to uh, to stake more or less as needed depending on you know kind of uh, the the level of, of ra- the share ratio that you want to pres- uh, get right so, uh this is part of the utility of the token and over time you know being a big uh, and and kind of involved uh platform we we expect there to be more utility as we go fantastic and, and i've got a decent sized question here so ultrade closed a almost two and a half million dollar seed funding round uh with some pretty big notable players in the space including uh valhalla capital big brain holdings and even the algorand foundation itself as a direct investor uh how will these investments and partnerships help ultrade provide uh, lasting value to its users uh you know into the future well you know vcs uh have a lot of visibility into the market yeah. right so they help us in understanding trends they help us in understanding what is happening in the market um you know figure out how to improve the the, the business models and things like that obviously the algorand foundation itself um is a wonderful partner to have a wonderful investor to have because you know they have their finger on the pulse of everything Algorand, right? A- absolutely. So, uh, and um, the, the the people uh, uh, in there are uh, fantastic, helping both with, uh, you know, uh, introductions and insight into, into the ecosystem, uh, marketing, you know, it's, it, it's, it's helpful to have them as an investor. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how often they invest directly in uh, in projects, but uh, that's what actually you know, caught me a little off. Brand. 
Yeah. Yeah. This, this was wasn't a little coming off ground off guard because as you, as you just said, it's not a grant and typically they mostly give out grants. I believe the Algorand Inc has invested in one or two projects, but I don't think I've ever seen the foundation. I mean, I could just, there's so much news, it might be hard to keep up, but that, that actually did very, uh, very much so catch me off guard. And it really just must show a, uh, you know, a good amount of confidence in, in what you're building over there for them to be, you know, one of the lead investors in the project, as opposed to just, uh, you know, giving out a grant money or something like that. Yeah, yeah, we were we were very happy about that. Uh, you know, I, I I think they probably are doing it in some other cases as well. I don't know, probably. You know the the ins and outs of it, but uh, yeah, having them a, a, to in, invest directly in the seed round was uh, a big boost, uh, not just in funding, but you know, confidence and uh, um, uh, you know access into the into the ecosystem. Uh, so it's you know it's fantastic to uh, to have that happen, and the other investors as well. You know we have uh, uh, you mentioned Valhalla, you mentioned uh, Big Brain, etc. These are awesome people. You know they are um, first of all in the heart of the Algorand uh, community as well, which is cool and good people too which you know for me is important i'm i'm building a, a company and uh you know you don't mix you, you're not supposed to mix bi business with the uh, personal stuff right but for me my company is personal to me you know so i want to work with people i like i want to work with people i respect um and these are the kinds of people that i you know that i like working with i if I need something, if I need to talk with them, they're there. If I, uh, you know, need advice, they're there. Um, and they're pleasant people too. You know, it's, uh, it's sometimes you you don't understand. You know, people out there don't necessarily understand that investors are not necessarily, you know, easy to work with sometimes, and and that can cause a lot of friction, a lot of issues. The people we have awesome so i'm really happy about that fantastic fantastic and i'm sure if they watch this they'll be happy to hear all of that uh you know we're about 40 minutes in uh is there anything already? we haven't already i know it's crazy we, it's it, this conversation has kind of flown by uh but is there People anything are right i should shut on? up more no honestly it's been a great conversation i just looked in the top left corner and i was i was really shocked to see it say 40 minutes right now it's all it's about half an hour past uh noon now which is uh uh, kind of mind blowing if you think about it, but I just want to give you a chance to, uh, you know, maybe bring anything up that we haven't touched on yet, because I know there's a lot that we have touched on, but I'm sure there's also plenty that we haven't. So if there's anything that we haven't talked about so far in the episode, feel free to uh, bring it to the attention of my audience. Again, th this is kind of how I do things. I do first and talk later. Tech, tech first, talk later, you know? Yeah. So when I came out with, um, with the old trade publicly people were kind of a little bit i think people were a little bit jarred and unsure of uh, wait who, who is this guy what's old trade what's going on here because we didn't have a community at, at that time you know we didn't have anything public really and already we're out and we're saying testnet is coming so you know <laughs> we didn't really get a chance to get acquainted enough with the algo community itself i, th I I think it would be great to, you know, I, I invite the algo community to, uh, you know, take us for a spin. Come see the test net first and foremost, because that's, you know, the tech is, is, you know, talks for itself. Come talk with us. Get to know us. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd love the opportunity to um, uh, get more uh, acquainted, you know, with uh with the people there are a few of them who who are already there but but you know um it, it's interesting because what we built is not, again it's not just about algorand right as a technology right. so we have people coming in literally from from uh, you know outside of also of the of the algorand ecosystem which is really cool because it's thousands of people who are also coming in and opening you know wallets and uh, which I think is also great for the, for the Algorand ecosystem. Um, Absolutely. But 
uh, I would love to see to you know get more of a personal relationship with the with the Algorand community. Um, and uh, so, first of all, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, I know you have uh, a great Algorand audience. And, they are fantastic. Yeah. So I appreciate this opportunity to uh, get introduced to them. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, you know, help us uh, build stuff. Uh, on that note, uh, where can people reach out to learn more about Old Trade or get in touch with, you know, either the product or yourself and learn more? Or uh, And also, what's the uh, address for the test net? So uh, I think you can see on the on the screen there uh, next to my name. Uh, ah, yes, I do. The the website uh, address oldtrade.org. Uh, you have there all the links, you know, to the to the testnet, to the social. So testnet is just testnet.oldtrade.org, but you can go through the through the website, and there are links there to uh, you know to uh, to our Twitter, Telegram, Discord, etc. You know, pick your poison. Right. And uh, yeah, so everything is available through through the website. Awesome. And for those uh, tuning in, I will leave a link to the website in the description below. So you can just click on that. You don't have to type in anything. Uh, smooth sailing, honestly. Uh, well, this has been fantastic, honestly. And I think uh, I think the Algorand community is going to love the product, honestly. I do. I, I've seen, like I said, I really have been seeing a lot of action on Twitter you know, basically every couple of days I'm tagged in something about old trade, which is very, very interesting. It's actually one of the reasons I finally reached out because I was like, you know, I need to learn more about this product. I keep on getting tagged in it. You know, I, I got I have to figure this out. So uh, super excited for what you guys are building and I'm happy to have this discussion again as you guys reach mainnet or, you know, come up with, you know, something even cooler down the line, six months after mainnet, whatever it might be, feel free to reach back out. We should talk maybe literally even in a month or so uh, when I can show you how you can spin up the JT DeFi. That'd be absolutely great. Uh, come on and give a little demo for myself and the audience. Honestly, I think that'd be fantastic. Sure. It's awesome. a date. It's, it, it's a date. Fantastic. Well, Dan, uh, great to meet you. Great. I uh, really appreciate you sharing the, your you know, old trade with us and telling us more about it. And I look forward to our future discussions. Same here. Thanks, man. Awesome. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.